Hi, and welcome to 15 Minutes of Fame. I'm Jeffrey Driscoll. And I'm Jim Kerr. I already messed that up, folks. We'll, uh, we're going to put the, 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 the starting titles in there anyways with the music, even though I already said we were on 15 Minutes of Fame. But here they come. <laughs> All right, welcome back. Screwed up already. That's all right. We're just going to keep going through it. Let's jump right in with some hockey news, Kersey. The Edmonton Oilers decided last week to keep Ryan Nugent Hopkins, then proceeded to beat the Avs in Colorado. Will it be a good choice in the long run to keep the youngster? I think he's better served at this level than he, than he would be going back to the dub. So it's good to see that they, that they kept him around because I think he's shown right off the bat that he can play at the at the NHL level. Yep. He's producing so far. If he can keep that up, you know, there might be some, uh, there might be at least one trophy heading back our way. That's might only right. be the Calder. Yeah. But still, it's better That's than right. nothing. But uh, no, you know, I, I, I like what he's done so far. And obviously the coaching staff does too. And uh, the Oilers are winning hockey games. Yeah, exactly. I was always worried though. Um, I always thought sending him back down to the dub might be a good idea just for his, to, for him to learn more stuff. But you know, what the guy's got nine points in nine games. What more is he going to learn in junior? So I absolutely agree with this choice. Jeff, I think we both know why you want him back down in junior. Yes. Because the world juniors are in Edmonton and That's Calgary. That's exactly year, right. And Canada needs to win. You are absolutely but, you know, right, sir. It's, it's kind of selfish either way because yeah. you want him back down in junior for Team Canada or stay in the bigs for Edmonton. Totally. Either way, you're a winner. Either way, you're a winner. Either way, hopefully, we're a winner. And let's hope the Oilers are winning. And a huge part of those that uh, success so far, Jim, has become has become because of the uh, work of the goaltenders between the pipes. Uh, I mean, Javi Bullen against Washington, third period especially. Dubnik versus yeah. Colorado. It's what I like to see. Well, and, you know, the, I think... There's, it's, it, there was definitely some question marks around Habby Bullen coming into this year just because, you know, he, he didn't play a lot last year with the injuries and, and also he had his, his problems this summer. So, you know, how does he bounce back? But he's bounced back by just being outstanding. Like, he, he's, he's played very well so far. And to have the one-two combination of, you know, Dubna coming in there, and he's just a massive person. Yeah. He's, <laughs> he's, he's huge. Boy. Yeah, but to have him come in and be able to shut the door like he is, like, that's going to be a, a very important uh, a portion of the game for the Oilers going down the stretch because Lord knows we've had some trouble between the pipes. Lord you know knows. whether it's you know f f having to force a guy like Dubnik and Jeff Delorier to take on uh, you know starting minutes between the two of them while, while neither of them were ready. Yeah. Uh, you know, or you know, any of the, any of the other uh, other uh, goaltending troubles we've had in the, the past few years. So it's finally nice to see. And mind you, it's only about a month into the season here, but it's it's nice to see so far that uh, you know that's a strong aspect of of Edmonton's game. Absolutely, the first suspension of the season for an Oiler goes to defenseman Andy Sutton for a hits on for a hit on Avs rookie Gabriel Landeskog. Uh, deserved, do you think, there, Jim? Uh, well, you know, I've heard both sides uh, of this argument, but at the end of the day, it is kind of it, it looks like the hits they put on the illegal video that they yeah. sent out at the start of the year um and you know in order to get these types of hit out of the game even if it's borderline you, you just kind of have to call it yeah it's, so it's it's a shame it that, is a shame you know, we'll, we'll be without you know one of our one of our stronger defensemen but uh you know this is just part of the whole thing where they're trying to get rid of headshots and so the more that the more they punish them the less likely it is they'll continue and that's just that's just part of getting them out of yeah. Dan Carcillo was also suspended this week for the type of hit that Brendan Shanahan was pretty clear about before the season started. How consistent has the Shanahan's been, Jim? That is a great term. Yes. Yeah. Let it. me just start by saying that. Yeah. Uh, you know, I I think they've been uh, relatively consistent. I think there's been a few here and there where you go, well, that's a suspension, but this isn't one. But yeah. I think it, it's at least it's at least more transparent. Like you kind of know what they're looking for and what they're not looking for. And if it's a, if it's a bad enough example, they sort of give you the explanation. Yeah. And you go, oh. Like uh, there was a Ryan Malone one yeah. earlier yeah. season where I was like, okay, how is that not a suspension? And they explained it. And you said, oh, okay, well, yeah. Whether that or not is you agree of, or not, at least they explained it. 
And it was sort of like, well, yeah, that is what you said at the start of the season, so that yeah. makes sense. Whereas other years, it's been like, why? Why? Yeah, just why? why? <laughs> exactly, just why? Um, so I think, you know, they're, they're as consistent as can be expected yeah. maybe right now. And, uh, Shanaban, what a, Shanaban, what a term. I hope that catches on. Jeff. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, hockey quick hits, bigger surprise, Toronto on the good side or the Columbus Blue losers on the bad side? <laughs> Uh, I'm going to say the Blue Jackets in yeah. this one because, you know, I thought they were going to be a lot better. I really did. Totally. Rick uh, Nash, I thought he could do it on tank. the back. Oh, it's just bad. Just bad. Um, the, the Leafs are impressive, though. Yeah, absolutely. Is it more interesting if Phil Kessel leads the scoring race so that Nikolai Habibulin has the league's best goals against average and save percentage? I'm going to go with the Bulin wall on this yeah. one because, we, as we mentioned earlier in the show, there were question marks. Everyone knows Phil Kessel can score. Yeah. But... Uh, Nikolai Havi Bullen's taken the league by storm so Absolutely. far. Absolutely. How many points will Sheldon Surrey end up this year? On pace for 60 some. I don't yeah, know. What I like 40? to see. 45? I think he's going to get 45 <laughs> games and get injured for at least 10 games. That's that's my, maybe that's wishful thinking. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, let's move on to football here. Something about I mean the Eskimos they're the you know even though they lost the last game against the Lions they're doing you know pretty well. But really, everybody's kind of within a game of each other uh, on the west side. So what's, what about the parity in the CFL this year? Yeah, well, you know, uh, what I read on Twitter actually uh, uh, just recently is that it's the first time since the league expanded to the 16-game season that, that there'll be no 12-game winners. Like, so the, you look at the top, you know, four, uh, four, five, six teams in the league, they're all about the same record. Yeah. And that's... I mean that's great for the league, and it should make for some interesting, uh, some interesting playoff uh, runs here. But yeah, I mean you know that it seems like that's what professional sports leagues want above all else. Yeah. I mean, you want you want you want stars, and you want like you want maybe one or two teams to, you know, spank everybody. But I think if you got all the top teams kind of in a cluster, that's pretty good. No, I mean, I it's like not it. like it's been a bad quality of football because I guess that would be the other side of it. If you go well, yeah. Everyone sucks. That's why everyone has the same record. Yeah. But it, but it's been it's been entertaining, you know, high level CFL football, and I think it's great for the league. Absolutely, Eskimos lost to the BC Lions this weekend. Jerome Messam only needed 36 yards to get to a thousand on the year, which is going to be a huge milestone. But it was held by the Lions defense to just 17, which is amazing. Uh, the Eskimos good in the first quarter, coming out of the gate, but Ray got sacked three times in the game. It's hard to win like that, Jim. It is, and you know what? What I I liked about the game is that they got down, but they came back. They yeah. didn't get all the way back, but it's you know it, it's always hard when you're when you're down by you know quite a bit to to mount that comeback. But Jeff, yeah, did you see our boy Gord Hines, friend of the show, Gord Hines? Is that who you're friend talking about? Friend of the about? show, Gord Hines. Yeah, absolutely. Very good friend of the show. Yeah, lost his lid, and you know he's in a very aggressive uh, position. When it comes to football, yeah. lost his lid, got up, saw that his quarterback was in trouble, threw down like three blocks, absolutely without a helmet on, against guys with helmets on. Looked great, and yeah, and then Ray went for a run. He's back up. He's yeah, running in front of him, throws another big block. Like the guy's a beauty. Absolutely, ended up a little, little, uh, little uh, blood yeah. on the side of the eye, but no worse little for wear. Back in the game right afterwards. Yeah. Good for what him. Good for you, Gord. Uh, that's the way to stay in the lineup, man. Edmonton boy. Right that's right. Uh, in the NFL, both the Colts and the Dolphins are winless halfway through the season. Do you think either of them will go the whole season without earning a W? It depends how bad they want that Andrew Luck fellow from, uh, from college there. <laughs> that's the, right. The, the suck for luck campaign yeah, yeah, yeah. going on. I, I, I think the Colts, man, I don't know if they're ever going to win a game. No kidding. It just shows you how important certain players are to a team. And the Dolphins were up going into the fourth quarter, but uh, but lost absolutely by three points. Like, it was absolutely unbelievable. It must have been a crushing defeat for them. Oh, that's got to that's gotta be tough. When you're when you're trying to just get that win yeah. and you come so close, it's almost worse than just getting blown up. That's exactly it. Yeah. So what's the latest on the NBA lockout here, Jim? Uh, looks like they're going to try to schedule some more meetings, but they had some last week. Uh, what do you got there? Yeah, it doesn't seem like there's a deadline yet. The, you know, the, the preseason's gone. The first bit of the regular season's gone. Uh, 
David Stern, who I'm, you know, I don't, I don't know how much to trust any numbers he yeah. throws out, but yeah. he says uh, the losing the preseason cost 200 mil. I mean, there's a there's a lot of kind of propaganda both both ways, I guess. But there's you know, uh, player agent Alan Walsh, who's yeah. uh, one of the uh, he's one of the NHL player agents that tweets the most. He wrote something the other day that, that caught my eye about how the league set revenue records last year, but the owners are claiming, uh, you know, that it's things are so bad. And so I really don't know whose side to take, but it seems like both sides are very stern. Yeah. And uh, both, uh, both sides are really not willing to. And I think the players have given up quite a bit so far. Yeah. And so I yeah. think they're a little bit rattled that the, that the owners don't really seem to want to just go that, you know, meet them, meet them in the middle kind of thing. Yeah. I think we could be in for a long, long delay here. But this, this next week, week, uh, maybe a week and a half, is very crucial. I agree. I agree. We're going to move on to the Gabbies now. These are good and bad by you. A good to the WHL, where they put their own crafty spin on the whole breast cancer awareness thing this past week. The Pats and the Oil Kings played on pink ice last Friday. Good to see. Very, very crafty. But we won't, we won't talk about who won that game. No, no, let's uh, leave that for, alone. Uh, for women's cancers to men's cancers. Anaheim's Jonas Hiller earns a good for his Movember mask, yes. featuring a picture of each of his teammates with a mustache painted on, and they got a nice one for Solani, like the... Yeah, the, <laughs> I really like that. Absolutely classic. Absolutely, and they uh, they made a little, a, little, a, couple, a little bit creepy, but I was okay with that. Yep. You know what? It's yep. okay. A good to the St. Louis Cardinals, who made a late-season surge and earned a playoff spot via the wild card. Only to march all the way to the World Series in the Fall Classic. They were down to their last out the game before. The Rangers were going to win. No, no, no. And oh. they came back and they won. And it was fantastic. That's two straight finals for the Texas Rangers. And no hardware. That's too bad for you, Mr. President. <laughs> I'm okay with that, obviously, as you can see. Yeah, I wonder if they'll be back next year. Hopefully. Uh, on the bad side, Terrell Owens held a public workout to uh, show NHL teams that he's in game shape last week. Seems like a good way to get the eye of some teams. Um, the only way any team would have seen, though, is if they were watching it on the channel of the various media outlets that showed up because no NFL scouts came. No one showed None. up. None. How bad is that? Like That's tough. That's oh. tough. How about bad to soccer player Julian Bursic, who blasted a ref with a right hook during an argument? The uh, George, Jim, why do you yes. always put the I can't, Spinchel I can't. George or Spinchel something? Yeah. George Star was so upset with himself afterwards that he retired. Like that's how bad it was, though. I guess you'd probably get a pretty hefty suspension for decking a ref. I suppose so. so yeah, if he wants to keep that money, he's just gonna retire. Yeah. Finally, a bad to Washington Redskins tight end Chris Cooley. He's been shut down for the season with a knee injury yeah. that never healed right after surgery. However, he's blaming the lockout for his problems since that left him to just kind of deal with the rehab himself. And he does have a point yeah. because you weren't allowed to visit team doctors and this and that. But uh, the other, you know, the other side of that argument is you probably got enough money to find some fairly high end doctors to figure it out for you. But uh, nonetheless, he's done for the season, That's the and he's playing with the lockout. This week's punchline is UFC fighter Nick Diaz, who called out Georges St. Pierre after putting a beating on BJ Penn uh, last weekend. GSP was supposed to fight Carlos Condit, but got hurt while training. Diaz claims St. Pierre isn't hurt, he's just scared. We talked about this when we had our, our guest uh, in a few uh, months back, a few weeks back. Uh, wasn't Diaz in the main event when the card was first announced, Jim? Yeah, he was. But uh -huh. then, you know, he didn't show up for a couple of press events, you know, even though he was told he has to learn to play the game. Yeah, exactly. So this whole this whole thing, he's saying, oh, he's faking an injury. He's scared. You could have fought him already, man. Yeah, but exactly. You, you could have done it. Like, uh, So I don't know. It, even if he was faking an injury... What is that like? What he's scared of, Carlos Condit? Like, are you Condit's boy? And you're like, yeah, exactly. Or like what? But he he will get his chance now because they're fighting uh, apparently Super Bowl weekend. All right. So, and uh, he's he's made GSP very angry. So we'll see how that. Well, turns yeah, out. we'll see how that ha happens. Exactly. Well, folks, uh, that's our 15 minutes of fame up for this week. Join us again next week when we get a whole new 15 minutes of fame. In the meantime, I am always Jeffrey Driscoll.
And I'm sometimes Jim Kerr. <laughs> Have a good week, folks. <laughs>